Hey y'all, Dustin here. Today I want to take a look at one of the saddest college football stories in the history of the game. I'm of course talking about the Idaho Vandals, who this past April decided to be the first and so far only team to drop from the FBS to the FCS ranks. Get ready for some sadness, folks. Before we talk about them dropping, let's go through their history. Their sad, sad history. Let's start at the beginning. The university was founded in 1889, and its first season of football was 1893. In 1922, they joined their first conference, a conference called the Pacific Coast Conference. Here are the other teams that were involved in that conference. Washington, Washington State, Oregon, Oregon State, Stanford, Cal, USC, and UCLA. Also Montana. This was back in the days when conferences decided that the best way to make a conference was to be close to the other teams in it, and for it to actually fit the idea of the conference. Unlike today, because Louisville, you're not on the Atlantic coast, and West Virginia is in the same conference as Kansas, and what does anything mean anymore? A scandal dissolved the conference in 1959, and Idaho would soon be barred from a new conference that was created from the California schools and Washington called the Athletic Association of Western Universities. Mm. To be fair, Idaho had become pretty non-competitive in the PCC and did not seek membership. Three other schools did, however, decide to try to join the conference and were eventually let in. The other three schools being Oregon, Oregon State, and Washington State. This new conference would eventually be called the Pac-8, which is now the Pac-12 and a Power 5 conference. After being independent for only three years, the Vandals decided to join the Big Sky Conference, which was in Division 2, but they wanted to keep more scholarships than they were allowed. They wanted to keep the D1 scholarship limit, so they were ineligible for D2 playoffs. In 1978, the NCAA decided to split Division I into two divisions, calling them 1A or 1AA. Now it's called FBS and FCS. The Big Sky Conference moved up to 1AA, and Idaho got to keep more scholarships than they would have been allowed under D2. So everybody was happy, and the Vandals stayed in the Big Sky Conference for 30 years, until 1995. That's when they joined the Big West Conference and moved up to 1A. In 2000, when the Big West stopped sponsoring football, Idaho and five other teams left the conference. Many of them landed in the Sun Belt, including the Vandals. In 2005, things seemed to be looking up. The Sun Belt had a lot of teams down in the South, which was a long trip for Idaho. Do you know what conference did not have a lot of teams in the South? The Western Athletic Conference, which the Vandals joined in 2005. The WAC included conference games in California, Nevada, and even a little team called Boise State over in Boise, Idaho all of which were much closer than the trip all the way down to the south into Texas. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and say the WAC was the best football conference of all time, but it was stable, and it seemed to most of us on the outside that Idaho had finally found a conference to call themselves home. Then, in 2012, the WAC stopped sponsoring football. Once again, Idaho found itself wandering the college football wilderness. They spent the 2013 season as independents before rejoining the Sun Belt in 2014. Which brings us to now. On March 1st of this year, the Sun Belt Conference announced that it would not be renewing the contracts of both New Mexico State and Idaho, citing the addition of Coastal Carolina, who is actually, you know, in the Sun Belt. And they boarded the two newest members in Georgia Southern and App State and that the NCAA had sanctioned a conference with 10 teams to have a conference championship game. Idaho had tried to convince the board of the Sun Belt to allow them to stay in the conference by making just the saddest PowerPoint presentation you could ever imagine, an article to which I have linked down below in the description. So what was Idaho supposed to do now? They could return back to the independent ranks like they were in 2013, but as Idaho's president said himself, quote, that alternative doesn't look attractive. The second option, the one that the Vandals decided to do, was to rejoin the Big Sky Conference for the first time since 1995, which would mean dropping down to 1AA, or FCS, the first team to ever go from FBS to FCS. The weird thing is, it's really not that weird. 
Idaho already plays all of their other sports in the Big Sky. It was only football that they were 1A in. They will be the first team since Pacific in 1995 to leave the FBS when Pacific folded their football program. Idaho has lost 152 more games than they've won, and they're just 46 and 138 since they first joined the Sun Belt in 2001. That's, uh, that's abysmal. That's a far cry from the Vandals' best season in 1998 when they won the Big West Conference at 9-3 and, and beat Southern Miss by a touchdown in the Humanitarian Bowl. Idaho's only been to two bowl games in his program history, but they won both of them. This will hurt. Idaho has future games set up at Florida, at LSU, and at Penn State. Those games pay out at over a million dollars apiece, and Idaho's 2016 projection is just $1.9 million. For comparison, Idaho State, who already plays in the Big Sky, their projection for 2016 is just $612,000. That's a difference of $1.3 million. The idea of dropping from FBS to FCS has to hurt Idaho and more than just in their pocketbook. Schools love their football teams and the notoriety it brings. It's really a shame that the university powers that be in Moscow are so ashamed of losing that they felt the need to drop in competition on the field. At least being in the FBS gives you some kind of notoriety. People know who your team is. Even if, to be fair to the regents and the university president, it is based on you not being a very good football team. But I don't want this video to be all negative, all doom and gloom. There is some positives, some silver linings. First off, travel will be easier. You don't really have to go as often to Georgia and Louisiana and Texas because the Big Sky already has teams in Washington, Montana, and of course, Idaho. Also, we may get more games between Washington State and Idaho in the Battle of the Palouse. The two campuses are only eight miles apart. I know a lot of you are not going to believe me, but that's a really cool rivalry that's super under the radar. Also, Idaho may start winning again. It won't be right now, it won't be immediate, but maybe in the next decade or so, Idaho can start challenging for not only conference championships, but get berths in the FCS playoffs, where a lot of more people will watch their games than they do right now. If in the next decade, they drop down to the FCS level and win a national championship, no one is ever going to second guess this move. People will call it brilliant. So maybe it was. So Idaho is a team that has consistently and constantly been left out in the cold, and honestly is probably the biggest victim of the conference realignment craze of the 2000s and 2010s. This is a team that was once in the same conference with the majority of the Pac-12. Think about how different things could have been for this team. Imagine if they never would have gotten kicked out of the PCC, if they would have gone with the other teams and formed a Pac-9 to start. Imagine if the Big West didn't quit sponsoring football, and the whack. Imagine if Idaho would have had one miraculous 10-2 year and played in a BCS game. It's just crazy to me that Colorado is in the Pac-12 and Idaho is not, even though they started with the same teams. It's really weird and it must be frustrating as an Idaho fan to sit back and watch Boise State and you go in the direct opposite paths. People all over the country fall in love with Boise State love Boise, and now they're getting in bigger conferences and are rumored to be included in the conference realignment deal in the Big 12, though I think they're kind of a long shot in that regard. You can watch my video on that right here. But I do believe that Idaho is an entire program built on the idea of what if. Now they have to wonder what if they would have stayed in the FBS. It's a sad story. I wish them all of the luck in the world and go Vandals? Let me know down in the comments section what you guys think about Idaho dropping down to the FCS. Honestly, do you think about it at all? And if so, how sad do you think it is? And do you think they will be the only team to do it? Or will others like New Mexico State, who's also from a talent-poor state, drop down as well? Let's look at the flip side now. What FCS teams do you think should take Coastal Carolina's guide and move up to the FBS? And if so, what conferences should they get into? I don't care what your opinion is, just make sure to let me know down below, as well as don't forget to hit that thumbs up button to give me a like if you enjoyed this video. Every single one of those count. You can also hit the red subscribe button down below to not miss any more college football videos that I have coming up, including a lot of on-site videos, 
and look at traditions and videos in the fall. It's going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to it, so don't miss out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. And as always, until next time. Before we talk about them dropping, let's go through their history. Their sad, sad history. Let's start at the beginning. The university was founded in 1889, and its first season of football was 1893. In 1922, they joined their first conference, a conference called the Pacific Coast Conference. Here are the other teams that were involved in that conference and universities. Mm. To be fair, Idaho had become pretty non-competitive in the PCC and did not seek membership. Three other schools did, however, decide to try to join the conference and were eventually let in. The other three schools being Oregon, Oregon State, and Washington State. This new conference would eventually be called the Pac-8, unlike today, because Louisville, you're not on the Atlantic coast, and West Virginia is in the same conference as Kansas, and what does anything mean anymore? A scandal dissolved the conference in 1959, and Idaho would soon be barred from a new conference that was created from the California schools and Washington called the Athletic Association of Western Washington, Washington State, Oregon, Oregon State, Stanford, Cal, USC, and UCLA. Also Montana. This was back in the days when conferences decided that the best way to make a conference was to be close to the other teams in it, and for it to actually fit the idea of the conference. Hey y'all, Dustin here. Today I want to take a look at one of the saddest college football stories in the history of the game. I'm of course talking about the Idaho Vandals, who this past April decided to be the first and so far only team to drop from the FBS to the FCS ranks. Get ready for some sadness, folks. 